Uh, welcome back everybody, your typical bull here. And um, today we are going to discuss habits that will either make or lose you money in trading. So your psychology, your mindset is a very, very important part of trading. So today we're going to discuss some psychology aspects of trading. But before you do that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, the support you guys are giving this channel is so appreciated. We just recently hit 500 subscribers, which is a huge milestone in my opinion. So uh, seriously, thank all of you for the support. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Turn the bell notification on. We are doing a huge course, and we're going to add to it. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff coming out in the future, and you're not going to want to miss that. So um, the first bad habit is not having a plan. When you don't have a plan to exit a position, if it goes against you, you're setting yourself up for failure. You need to know why you get in and when you get out before you ever click buy or sell. Set your targets and follow your targets. If you can't say why you're taking a trade in 30 seconds or less, you shouldn't be in that trade because you didn't plan it. For example, let's say I'm trading an ABC stock and my explanation is going to be ABC stock is bouncing off the lower Bollinger Band. Stochastic is under 30. It has formed a two-candle reversal pattern and is following a confirmation candle. I have buy orders a few cents above the confirmation candle, and I'll get out just below the pattern if it goes against me. And I'm looking to make two times my risk for exit at profit, and I'll move my stops to break even when the price reaches the middle Bollinger Band. Boom. Anyway, if you can't explain in a very short amount of time why you're taking a trade, you shouldn't be taking the trade. So number two is not treating your trading like a business. In business, you keep good records. You don't go to work for the excitement. You go to work to make money. It's the same thing in trading. We are here to make money. You should write down your trading plan. Keep it close to your desk and read it every single day. You should keep records of every trades that you take so that we're going to talk about trading plans in a later lesson. So necessarily and journals as well so you don't really need to know what those are right now but for now the basic trading journal should contain an entry date an entry price an exit price an exit date comments about why you took that trade or what specific strategy you were following when you took it you cannot measure success or failure in a strategy if you can't quantify because you need to be able to review those trades and find out what went wrong, why it went wrong, and whether you can adjust that to make it better next time. You cannot review trades with no data to review. Revenge trading. Seriously, tell me if this sounds familiar. I'm super upset about Apple stock going down. Like, for real, it can't go any lower. I'm going to hold this shit, or I'm going to average down. What happens? It goes lower. Well, crap, it's seriously got to be at the bottom now, right? I'm going to buy more or get back in because I already exited the last position at a loss. I want my money back. This market's not going to beat me. It's just a pullback. And then it goes lower again. The market does what the market wants to do. The market can remain irrational longer than you can remain liquid. And what that means is that it doesn't matter if the market's wrong. The market can do what it wants. So you need to trade what the market does and not what you think it's going to do. Blaming the market. The, oh, there's that quote I just used. The market can remain irrational longer than you can stay solvent. It's by uh, John Menard Keynes. You can't blame the market when you lose money. The market did not make you buy Apple. The market did not tell you when to exit Apple. You made that choice yourself, so that is all on you. You cannot take trades based on how you feel. Trade what the market is doing, not how you feel that it should be doing. Trying to predict the future. You cannot do it. The market does what it wants to do. It's not out to get you. It's literally just price data printed across your screen. Nothing more, nothing less. Every candlestick represents one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, a whole day of trading. That's it. It's just data. You have to tra take trades based on probabilities and assume that any one trade can and sometimes will be a loser, even if the setup is good. Sometimes good setups fail. If you do not have a plan in place for taking those losers or winners, you will be swept away in a sea of indecision. Should I hold this? Should I sell this? When do I get out? Is it going to turn around tomorrow? 
You need to know when you get in and when you get out on both sides of a trade. Taking small wins to have a good winning percentage. This is huge. So here's what happens. Imagine you take 10 trades and you win seven, seven of them. But when you win, you take small profits. So maybe you take a $30 profit. Maybe you take a $10 profit, a $12 profit, an $8 profit, a $40 profit, a $23, and a $9 profit. And when you lose every time, you lose 50 bucks. Guess what? You just lost money. Holy crap. My win rate was 70%. How did I lose money? Your win rate doesn't matter. All that matters is that you manage your risk properly and use good risk to reward ratios. At least two times your risk for every single trade. You move stops down so you don't take a loss. This is another emotional trading decision. You are trading a three bar reversal pattern. It's okay if you don't know what that is. You're, you set a stop loss just below the low of the pattern that would net you a $25 loss if you're stopped out. You're aiming for $50 in profits. The trade starts to go and it gets to you and it starts getting close to your stop. So you move your stop down just a little bit. I had to be fine. I'll just move it down just a little bit. And then it keeps going down. So you move your stop down just a little bit more. And finally, you get so tired of moving your stop down and you can't stand losing another dollar. So you just let it hit the stop loss. Holy crap. This dude, that market just did me over again. So instead of taking a $25 loss like you had planned, which is not a big deal at all, now you take $75 or $100 loss. And now it takes two or three trades to make up for that one loss. Oops. You switch from strategy to strategy when you lose trades. So you've been trading a strategy. It doesn't really matter which one it is. And all of a sudden, you lose three trades in a row. Just for your information, this happens. And then the first thing goes through your head is, holy crap, this strategy must not work. This is crap. It's garbage. So what do you do? You go back to Google, the internet, YouTube. You find another strategy. Do you lose? Well, crap, this one's bad too. And then the cycle continues. You just keep bouncing from strategy to strategy to strategy. And you don't figure out how exactly any one single strategy works or even really give it a fair shake. There is no magic indicator. When you come across a new strategy... Test that strategy with past market data, and we're going to do a video on back testing as well. See if it works. And just because you lose a few trades in a row doesn't necessarily make a strategy bad. That happens sometimes. Sometimes, if you test a strategy and it's worked in the past on a consistent basis, it probably still works on a consistent basis. Give it a month and take good setups. Don't force the trades. Make sure you are following the strategy as it is meant to be followed and continue using it. And maybe the next four or five trades will be winners in a row. Sometimes you get losses in a row. Sometimes you get winners in a row. Sometimes it just happens. As long as you're following a consistent plan that you've tested, it's going to work in the long term. You don't back test. That's another one that we were just kind of talking about here. Back testing is boring. But it is so necessary. You can't take my or anybody else's word about something working. If I was going to sell you a car, you wouldn't pay me before you test drove that car, would you? Hell no, that'd be stupid. It's the same with a trading strategy. Some strategies fit some people. Some strategies don't fit you. You need to find something that seems interesting to you and then take it for a test drive. Scroll through some past market data. Get yourself a notebook. See how many trades you would end up taking and see how many of them win, see how many of them lose. See if you can tweak it a little bit to maybe increase your winners and decrease your losers. And then try trading it for a while on a paper trading account. If it works, then you can add that specific setup to your trading plan. It's so important to backtest. You have to know the expected winning and losing percentage of it and the expected returns that you're using from a certain strategy. And if you don't, you're really just guessing. This one looks like it might work. Let's try it. This next one looks like it works. Let's try that one. And then you just keep jumping back and forth. And once again, we're going to do a video on backtesting and how you can backtest without spending a lot of money on uh, software and this and that. You risk too much money on one trade. Some trades you take, you risk $100. Some trades you risk $50. Some trades you risk $30. You cannot create consistency if you don't have numbers that you can track. Always risk the same percentage of your liquidation per trade. 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 21%, 22%
to 3% of your account as maximum. And later on, when you get better at trading, you can maybe start messing around with trailing stops and moving your stop losses up based on price action. But for right now, just stick to solid, straight up 1% risk of your account or 2% risk of your account for two times that in gains. 1% of 1,000 is $10. It seems small right now, but over time that compounds. Imagine you trade for an entire year and you win 70% of your trades. Let's keep it simple and say that you take 10 trades each month. So that's a total of 120 trades per year. So that's 84 wins is $1,680 and 36 losses is $360. You make $1,320. That's over double of your account. And that's not even taking into effect the compounding effect because every time you win a trade, your net liquidation is going to be larger. So your 1% or 2% is going to be larger. So you would have actually made a lot more money than that. So if you're losing sleep over a trade and you find yourself checking your positions all the time, hundreds of times a day, you're looking at your phone to see what the market's doing or you're checking it in the pre-market and the after hours, you're risking too much on that position. You need to lower the risk to something that you are more comfortable with so that you don't feel the need to look at it all the time because you don't have to. You don't have to watch this stuff. Once you put a trade in, it's in and it should be done until you check it the next morning or it hits your targets. So some thoughts, a little typo there, sorry. It does not matter what strategy you use or even what indicators that you use. There's no holy grail or magic indicator that wins all the time. All of them will lose sometimes. If you trade emotionally and without the proper mindset, you're not going to make money. It's just not going to happen ever. If you let emotions control how you trade, you're always going to be a losing trader. So the good habits. The best traders understand that anything can happen on any trade and that no single loss matters in the grand scheme of things. Oops. Why are we going backwards? They take their setups in a day in and a day out, no matter what happened to the trade before, because they know that their plan works. They tested it, and at the end of the year, they know if they continue to follow that plan, there is no doubt of the outcome. They make money. A good trader understands that the goal is not money. Money is a side effect of the goal. The main goal is to trade well, perfect your plan. You cannot stop from losing. Sometimes you're going to take losses, but you can minimize the impact that losses have on your portfolio and on your mindset. You don't focus on your account balance. They review their trading plan to the end of each week or month and adjust it according to their findings. If you trade for a month and find you're losing money and you've been following your plan to the letter, you may need to adjust it. Find out why you're losing. Are you trading in a down market? Are you just barely getting stopped out before a thing moves into your profit target? Do you need to add additional confirmations to your setups because maybe you're you need additional confirmations? Like maybe you've been using the stochastic. Maybe you should add the RSI into that too as a secondary setup. Don't throw a plan at the window. Just adjust it and make it suit you better. You don't trade based on ro- rumors and emotions. A good trader doesn't read a Wall Street Bets article and see moons and dollar signs. A good trader does not watch a CNPC article and hear some suave analysts say market crash and immediately short the entire market. A good trader carries on as usual because taking the same setups he has always taken because they work. I mean, news articles and stuff like that, they do move markets. But if you're following your plans, not going long when SPY is down, not going short when SPY is up, then when good news happens and when bad news happens, you're already going to be in the whole I take shorts now because SPY is down mindset. They, you follow your plan without questions. News articles, all that stuff, it doesn't matter. They're not greedy. If you're taking a strategy that gives you two times on your risk, you hit your target and then the key, the ticker keeps running another five times risk in your favor. Don't get upset about that. You made a good trade that worked exactly how you planned it. And definitely next time you do it, don't move your targets up because then you're feeling like you're going to miss out. That's emotional trading. Sometimes it will move higher. That just happens. But more often than not, what will happen is that next time you take that same setup, you'll move your targets up 
and it will go up and it'll hit your 2R profit, your two times risk target, which is your original profit, and then tank out. And then you'll end up losing a trade that you would have won. You don't force trades. If no valid setups are available, then don't trade. It's really simple. Sometimes when you force a subpar setup, that just kind of meets the criteria, but not quite. So like maybe let's say you're trading the stochastic and you're trading a candlestick pattern. Oh, this candlestick pattern is kind of halfway formed and the stochastic's almost oversold. So I'm going to go ahead and go long because I couldn't find another trade today. And this one's the closest one. So what happens then the price goes down another, you know, two or three dollars finishes out your pattern and then goes up and then you're like, well, crap, if I had just waited a couple of days, I wouldn't have got stopped out. I'd made money. Sometimes, no trade at all is the best trade to take. Just carry on scanning the market until a proper setup presents itself. If you must trade, use the downtime to paper trade and test other setups that you're working on. So that way, you've got other setups. And to conclude in this video, it's been a bit longer than my normal videos, but this is some really, really important stuff. Some key stuff to take away here is to be patient. Follow your plan. Don't focus on the money. The money will come. Focus on trading your plan perfectly. Wins and losses do not matter in the long term as long as you've tested your plan and know it to be valid. It's like playing a football game or watching a football game that you recorded, but you already know the end score too. You know who wins in the long term, and in this case, it's you, because you tested your plan, and you know it works. But before you go, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and like this video. Share it to your friends who may need it as well. Seriously, the support you guys are giving me is just astounding, and I'm so happy, and I sincerely thank all of you. Until next time, always remember, money is not the goal. Good trading is the goal. Money is a side effect of good trading.